Hey guys, welcome to this video. My name is Attempster. Today I'm going to be going over nine different things you can do to optimize your game in the Blender game engine. So the first thing you can do to optimize your game is try and keep your vertice count down to a minimum. Now the vertice count, if you haven't already found it, is up the top here. This is basically displaying how many individual points your entire game has. So this right here is one single vertice and in total it will add them all together and show you how many you have. Now this example here is a little bit extreme as I only have 5000 vertices which is very low. Typically for other games you'll have between 50 to 100,000 but again it depends on what you're trying to do and what you're trying to show. Games that have more than 100,000 vertices don't usually work too well on most computers so unless it's a gaming computer you might experience some issues so again it's recommended that you keep an eye on your vertice count here and try and keep it as low as as possible. Again, the lower your vertices are, the better your game will run. Now the second thing you have to keep an eye on is the image textures that you are using within your game. Now typically in a game, you will have lots of different textures that you apply to different objects around your game to make it look realistic and also add color. If the image textures you are using are really, really big, it's going to be putting a massive strain on your GPU and your game will run really slowly. So some rules that I use to get around this is basically for objects that are a bit of a distance away from the player or are special effects like muzzle flare or smoke or something, I'll try and keep those under 512 by 512 if I can. And then for objects that are closer to the player, I'll try and boost up the count, so under 1024. Obviously for maps like the entire terrain you might want to boost up to 2048 but I highly recommend you don't go past that because then anyone who doesn't have a super gaming PC won't be able to play it. Now the next thing you can do to optimize your games is to add level of detail. Now basically what this is is when you have one object here for example that changes the closer you get to it. So if we zoom out all the way here you'll notice that this looks exactly the same as this right here. Then if we zoom in a bit you'll notice it gets the extra leaf like this one here and then if we zoom in all the way you'll notice that it looks very high resolution like this one over here. Basically what it's doing is changing resolution the closer you get to it, which means that the objects that are really close to you will look really good, but the objects that are far away won't. So that basically saves you a huge amount of performance while also allowing you to show really, really high quality meshes at a very close distance. Now this technique can be used for almost anything and is really handy, especially when you have large levels where you can just take out parts and uh, remove them completely if the camera is far away enough. So for example you notice these uh, stands here in the middle, they'll disappear as my camera gets further and further away. This means it will save performance and the camera won't have to render the objects as it gets close. Now for a full video on how to do level of detail, I'll leave a link down in the description below as I have already covered it. So if you want to, you can go ahead and check that out. So the next thing you can also do to improve the performance of your games is to add level of detail not only to the objects in the scene but also to the lighting. So to show this working, if you keep your eye on the wall at the very back there and I move towards it, you'll notice that a light flicks on once I reach within a certain distance. The same goes for the place where we started up the top there. If I get far enough away, it will turn off and then when I get within a certain distance, say around here, then it will switch on again. So what this basically does is it adds and removes lights depending on where the player is and how close the player is. Especially when you have lights for each of the objects, for example the machines here, and also other lights that you want to have in at the same time. And considering Blender doesn't work too well with more than 10 lights, uh, this is quite a useful method, especially for large maps when you want to have multiple light sources at once. So how the lighting works is basically we have a spawner that starts off, and if the player is close enough, so within 75 units, then it will add the object light control 1. 
What this will do is on this layer it will spawn in an object or spawn in an empty that has both lights parented to it along with the lamps here as well and then that will add those three different lights that one for the machine and the one for the lights on the ceiling as well so then on the empty here I've written a really small script that basically checks whether the player is within that distance so that far away from here and if it is then it will end itself and then remove all the lights as well so again I am doing the project FPS tutorial series so I will be covering how I did that and how you can add that in but that will be at a later date now the next thing you can do to also improve your games is to check the physics. Now typically when you're in the game environment, so you go to Blender Game and you go ahead and you can add any object uh, right here, they all have one thing in common and that is that by default they all have physics applied. So if we go along to the physics panel here, you'll notice that they are all static. Now to see what this means, we can go over here, we can go down to physics visualization and press P. Now as you can see, all the objects have triangles around each face on them. And for the more complex objects like the sphere and the monkey, you can see there is a lot more triangles for each one just used to calculate the physics representation. So this is a bit of a waste of performance, considering especially if this is in the background somewhere and the player doesn't even interact with it. So if you don't need physics for these objects, definitely go ahead and turn them off. You can do this easily by going to the physics panel and just selecting no collision. And doing that for all the objects, if we quickly do it here, then you'll notice that, boom, there is no physics calculations and that whole side of it that would have previously had to be in processed is no longer happening. However, if you do still want to add collisions but don't want to have such complex collisions, what you can also do is change it back to static and then you can check collision bounds down here. Now if we press P, you'll notice that there's only a box worth of collisions around the object. Now that might not be accurate enough, so you can obviously change it to a sphere collision to represent the object a bit better, maybe cylinder, cone. So any of the collision bounds here are going to be more performance friendly than just leaving it on nothing by itself. Again, the less physics you have, the better your game's going to run. Now one more thing which is surprisingly obvious but many people go past it is actually in the starting panel here under the render settings. Now by default the shading for the viewport here is set to multi texture however most people will be using GLSL as it looks a bit nicer and lets you do more stuff. Now you'll notice under GLSL when we click it we get seven different checkboxes added. Now all of these are different sections of GLSL that Blender has to import and process every single frame. However, if you're not using any of these features, then why enable them? So for example, if you're not using shadows, you can turn off shadows. If you're not using nodes and ramps, you can turn both of those off as well. And just doing that will already increase your performance since Blender can completely ignore those sections as it doesn't even have to import them. So there is something very simple you can do. Again, I highly recommend that you you switch these on and off in your game to see what changes and if something does change that you don't want to change then just leave it on uh, however the more you turn off obviously the better the performance for your game is going to be overall now for my recent game that I made the blender game making competition 15 I went ahead and turned off ramps, nodes and shadows and already the entire performance of my game has increased and no one reported any performance errors or any problems with running the game itself. So that was really great to hear and I was actually surprised how much just unchecking these boxes improved the performance. The next thing you can do to improve your games in the Blender Game Engine is to add an occlude object. Now this right here if we go over to the physics you can see it is just called an occlude object. Now this is the physics setting in the background here just called occlude. Not many people use it as I'm sure they don't really know what it does but basically as you can see here if I press P 
you'll notice that anything behind that one object is going to disappear. So anything that is inside it, like these boxes here, will disappear. However, if you look behind it through this hole here, you can see that all of the objects that are visible in the hole will be rendered. Now this is really handy if you have lots and lots of rooms that the player will be able to look into and stuff. So if you don't want to be rendering everything that's in those rooms at once, you can use an occluder object for the walls itself. Now one thing you'll have to keep in mind is that an occlude object does not collide with anything. Uh, whereas if you set it to static, then it will collide with something. So that is one problem you'll sort of have to overcome and you might need to make an additional collision mesh around the uh, walls of the room. I'm going to go ahead and leave a link down to this below in the description if you want to go ahead and check out this demo which can really simply just show you what an occluder does and how to add it in. Now one more thing you can also do to improve the performance of your game is to use a special type of duplication. Now by default in Blender when you want to duplicate an object you can just press Shift D to duplicate and move it over here. So now you have two different objects completely separate from each other and Blender will have to calculate everything for each object by itself. Now this can occasionally be a problem for the low-end PCs when you have huge amounts of terrain with lots and lots and lots of duplicated objects. However, there is one way which you can get around doing this and that is by instead of pressing Shift D, you can select the object that you want to duplicate and press Alt D, like that. Now it will look like it does the exact same thing but in reality, if you go to edit mode, you'll notice that they both are tweaked at the same time. So if you change one object, then the other one will change as well. So if you make a hundred of these copies using Alt D, then a hundred versions of those will be modified at once. So they'll all be changed if you change one of them. Now that can be a downside if you want to have variation, however if you're again going for the performance side of things, using Alt D is a lot more friendly as instead of making a full copy it just goes ahead and links the data together. Now last but not least we have over here the standalone player. Now we have a resolution here for the embedded which is 1080p is just basically the dimensions of the camera here and we also have a standalone player resolution. Now this shouldn't really affect your computer especially if it's fairly modern however the older sort of scale of laptops and stuff might have a bit of a problem playing your game at 1920 by 1080 Also similarly related to this is the camera. So if we go over to the camera settings you can see clipping that we have. This starts at 0.1 and ends at 100. Now this clipping distance is actually how far the camera can see. So anything past that distance the camera won't be able to see. And that is sometimes when you are playing a game and the background just sort of gets cut out or the sky just sort of gets chopped off and you can't see it anymore. So if you are having troubles with performance again you can increase it by reducing this amount but that also means that the objects that are closer to you will get cut off again and uh, it will be more obvious. However, you can also use the mist option to uh, sort of fade out the objects as they get close to the cutting point. So there we go guys, those are nine different things you can do to improve your games in the Blender Game Engine. If you have any other methods that you use to improve your games, be sure to leave a comment down below and let everyone know. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like, comment or share. All of that stuff is greatly appreciated. If you have any problems, let me know in the comments as well. But either way, hope you enjoyed the video, have an awesome week, and I'll see you guys in the next video.